Hi there, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna study the rate of change. We will see two questions and I'll give you one question as a practice problem to solve. As always, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, please share them down below in the comment section and let's go to the class. Welcome, welcome guys to another class. So today's topic will be the rate of change. Uh, this topic appears mostly in the IGCSE Further Pure Mathematics and this question here is taken from the past paper. So the rate of change is not that hard. The only thing that you need to know is the derivatives, how to find the derivatives, and a um, couple formulas. So let's have a look on this question. The volume of a right circular cone uh, is increasing at a constant rate of 27 cm cubed per second. The radius of the base of the cone is always 1.5 times the height of the cone. Calculate the rate of change. All right, of the height of the cone in cm per second when the height of the cone is 4 cm. Now, basically, the rate of change of the height of the cone will be this thing. It will be dh dt. This is time, this is height. So, it basically means how, how fast the height changes with respect to the time. And we're given 27 cm cubed per second. That means cm cubed is the volume, right? They're saying the volume of the right circular cone is increasing. So that means dv dt is equal to 27 cm cubed per second. Right? This is the rate of change of the volume. Now, one thing to know here is that the volume of the cone is given by this formula, 1 over 3 pi r squared multiplied by h. And then in this question we also have that um, the radius is 1.5 times the height. That means we have r is equal to 1.5 times height. Okay? Okay, so we are interested in the height with respect to time. So how about this? In the formula here for the volume <coughs> we get rid of this radius because we're only interested in the heights right this question is not interested in the radius so <clears throat> instead of r here we're gonna put 1.5 h so it will become 1 over 3 pi multiplied by 1.5 h squared times h okay and then which is equal to um, 1 over 3 pi 1.5 squared will be 2.25 and then h squared is h squared and then we have h here times h let's simplify it it will be so 1 over 3 times 2.25 is gonna be 0 0.75 times uh, there is pi here okay so we put pi and then h squared and h will give us h cubed okay because there is only one h here. There are two h. When we add them together, we have three. All right, so the next step is um, using the chain rule. So guys, you need to know the chain rule in derivatives. It's not that hard, so I'll explain it to you in a, in a second. So using the chain rule, what we have is dv dt is equal to like this, dv d h multiplied by d h d t you know why this is true because this d h and that d h can cancel out and we're left with d v d t the same as on the left hand side okay so we know d v d t the value which is 27 here we can find d v d h easily from the formula here and then we can find d h d t after that so first step Let's find out uh, dvdh. dvdh is equal to. Now we know that the volume here is the same as this equation. So dvdh is going to be, when you do the integration, we'll have 0 0.75 times pi as always, and then multiplied by h cubed will give us 3h squared. That's the derivative of, of h cubed. And then is equal to now 0 0.75 times 3 we're, we're gonna have 2.25 uh, pi h squared okay so 
and then they're saying when the height of the cone is 4 cm so at this point we'll have the height is 4 cm let's calculate the value of, uh, of dvdh when the height is 4 cm so we'll have 2.25 times pi times 4 squared after calculation it's gonna be equal to let me do the calculation in my mind give me one second it's, go it's gonna be equal to 36 pi okay you can do the calculation by pausing this video so finally what we do now is we put instead of this dvdt what we were given in the very beginning it was 27 right this dvdh is 36 pi 36 pi and then dhdt here times dhdt so the very final step is to divide um, by 36 pi to get dhdt so what we have is dhd t is equal to 27 over 36 pi okay and then after you do this calculation you your answer will be let me do the calculation give me one second guys so your answer should be 27 divided by uh, 36 uh, pi it should be around 0 0.24 0.24 cm per second. What it means is every second the height increases by 0 0.24 cm. Okay, I hope it's clear. This is the rate of change. So what we were given in the very beginning, we were given the volume. It increases every second by 25, 27 cm per uh, cubed. And you need to find how fast the height increases. Basically dhdt here. And when the height is 4 cm. Alright, I hope that was clear. Uh, let's go to the next example. So this problem is taken from the IGCSE further pure mass pass paper and we are asked to find the rate of change of the radius of the cone. Now it's quite similar, right? So we also have the cone here, the circular cone. Now we know the volume of the cone is given by the, f the formula 1 over 3 pi r squared h. Okay, and then what we're given is um, the volume changes at 50 cm cubed per second. Now, how do we know this is the volume? Because the volume uh, unit is cm cubed, and then the second it means it's the rate of change. So d v d t. This is the very first thing that we noticed is equal to 50, right? Cm cubed per second. So, and then we also see here they're saying the radius of the base is always three times the height of the cone. So what we have is r is equal to three times h. So, and then we are interested in the rate of change of the radius, right? So in this formula for the volume, let's get rid of this h in order to leave only the radius. How do we do it? we see r is equal to 3h so that means h is equal to r over 3 okay so from here v was equal to initially 1 over 3 pi r squared h which actually becomes 1 over 3 pi r squared and then instead of h we'll put r over 3 okay and then it's equal to 1 over 3 times 1 over 3 will be 1 over 9 pi r we have r squared and then r here it's r cubed okay so they are saying when the radius is 10 to find the rate of change so what we can do now is to use the chain rule so using the chain rule we write dv dt is equal to dv dr right times dr dt why because we're interested in, in dr dt it's the rate of change of the radius so <coughs> we have the value of dvdt which is 50 is equal to dvdr we can um, let's see we can find the dvdr by using this formula v is equal to 1 over 9 pi r cubed so dvdr is gonna be equal to uh, when you differentiate it it will be 1 over 3 pi and then r cubed will become 3 r squared and then if you simplify 1 over 3 and 3 will cancel out so we'll have pi r squared mm, pretty nice and then when r is equal to, they're saying 10 cm, right? Let's find the value of dvdr is equal to pi times 10 squared, which is 100 pi.
pi. Okay, so instead of dv dr here we'll put 100 pi and then times dr dt. This is what we want to find, dr dt. So finally dr dt will be equal to, let's see, it will be 50 divided by 100 pi. And then after you do calculation it will be equal to, um, let me do the calculation real quick, give me one second guys, 50 divided by 100 pi. So it's going to be equal to 0 0.16, 0 0.16, and the unit is cm per second. That means the radius changes, um, increases by 0 0.16 cm every second. All right? Hope that's clear. And that being said, this is the rate of change. The main thing you, that you guys need to know is to know how to use the chain rule. And uh, I will give you one example for you guys to practice. So take a look on this example, also from the past paper. Um, leave uh, me in the comments down below. Leave me your thoughts on this topic if you find it difficult or easy. Um, and if you like this video, please hit the, the hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more content, and you don't want to miss it. And also, uh, the next topic will be the next video will be uploaded tomorrow. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, hey, thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, make sure you check out the link below for my online math courses where you will find the tips and tricks I share with you guys uh, for solving math problems, which I have learned over the years and years of teaching math to many, many students. So with that being said, make sure you check out the link below. Press that like button and I will see you in the next class, guys. Study hard.